Wisconsin Foodie would like to thank the following underwriters. Good to see you. Good to see you, brother. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me out. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, um, let's grab some poles. We'll start talking about what we're gonna catch. Okay. Sounds like a plan. Sounds great. Mirror Lake. This is all bluegill, right? Yeah. I mean, there's a variety of fish here in the lake. The most luck that people have is gonna be with bluegill, uh, different panfish. We have a few different fish that get stocked occasionally. There's actually a decent northern fishery. Oh, great. Um, but guys generally have more luck, like in the wintertime, ice fishing for northern. Yeah. So today's not gonna be the day to go out there trying to hit the northern. But yeah, I think bluegill is probably gonna be our target. That's gonna make the most sense for us today. Okay. So. Excellent. I will say, usually I go into fishing experiences thinking like, eh, you know, I, I'm great to do that, but I always end up with that one hammer handle northern that gets me completely slimy and disgusting and you smell like a northern for the rest of the day. I think that's uh, their gift to me. It's that's the curse of the northern. But I think this one, this one feels like it's, uh, it's ready for some action here. Yeah, yeah. Should we do it? Yeah, let's hit the water, man. That sounds great. I can't wait. Here we go. I feel so lucky to be out here with you, to have you show me the secrets of catching monster bluegill that Mirror Lake is known for. <laughs> yeah. Monster is maybe stretching it just a little bit, but uh, yeah, we, we've got some bluegill in here and we'll be happy to see if we can find a few of them to get our hands on for dinner. Well, let's get on them. So Ryder, this is gorgeous. Tell me a little bit about Mirror Lake. Yeah, so we are an impoundment of Dell Creek. And so that means there's a dam a little further down the lake from where we are. And uh, we're about 139 acres of water. The park itself, Mirror Lake State Park, surrounds the lake. The park is about 2,200 acres. So there's a lot of land opportunity to recreate as well. But the lake itself is surrounded and um, about 70% of the shoreline is owned by the state through Mirror Lake State Park. So um, even though we're not very far from the Wisconsin Dells, we've got a pretty rustic nature to the shoreline. And uh, you can kind of get that Northwoods feel, you know, without having to go too far from home if you're in the, the southern part of the state. I mean, like this lake and the Wisconsin Dells in general is thought of as like a recreation or a vacationer's paradise. But this is actually really quiet in comparison. But what's cool is you could spend the day here relaxing and then at night or the next day, man, go to the Dells, go crazy, hit all the water parks, do whatever you want, and uh, you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You know? Sure. Like, what, what are your favorite activities to suggest for people coming into the park, maybe for their first time? Being out on the lake and paddling, experiencing the park and the area from the water is, is probably my favorite thing to do. People can bring their own boats, their own canoes, kayaks, those kind of things, motor boats. Um, but we have a really robust rental here as well. So there's the opportunity to, to rent boats. You don't have to have all the, the high-end equipment yourself to come out and do it. Can you talk to me a little bit about your love for the wild places of Wisconsin and how that influenced you coming back almost home to manage this property? You know, growing up, I had the opportunity to come to Mirror Lake and Devil's Lake. Some of the other places, too, in this area, you know, the Leopold Reserve is an area that's not very far away, International Crane Foundation. So growing up in this area, I had a lot of opportunity to get into the outdoors and experience it, both just as a passive user or as a consumptive user, fishing or, um, you know, taking hunting opportunities, those kind of things. And so one of the things I like about my job is the opportunity to get people out and, and share that um, with them and give them the chance to experience some of these properties and uh, some of these opportunities that are on I mean, just the phenomenal public land that we have in the state of Wisconsin. Yeah, that is actually one of my favorite parts about the state of Wisconsin are all the wild places that are here and protected and preserved. I have a real agenda here today. I think it's super important for people to understand where their food comes from and, you know, like have that connection to actually harvesting their food, if it's plants or things that they're foraging or even, you know, pulling fish. And uh, we got to get on some bluegills here, man, because uh, there is really nothing better in my estimation than a shore lunch fish fry of bluegill. Yes, I can wholeheartedly agree with that. And how cool too, you know, you got the opportunity, you can catch a fish from a lake that you're staying on, go back to your campsite, cook it up and like, not farm to table, right? Lake to table. <laughs> lake to table. I love it. I love it. That's Northwoods for sure. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Hey -oh. 
fish on. <laughs> you like that hook set? That was good. <laughs> what a little guy. Scoreboard. Yeah, cool, cool. We could have our own fishing show. We could call it Getting Lippy with Luke and Ryder. <laughs> Do you see people who come to the state park with the intention of making uh, making what they catch or they find or forage or hunt their dinner? Like, is that is that a trend that you see growing? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, it's not like everybody stops at the office window and says, hey, I'm here looking for my dinner. But, you know, having the opportunity to talk to people that come out on the property. But there are a lot of people that are really interested in having a hand in what they're eating. It's one thing to know where it came from, from the farmer's market or you know maybe a, a grocery or a boutique shop or something like that but man you knew you know exactly where it came from if you're the person that harvests that deer or catches that fish oh, oh no way oh, get out of town ladies and gentlemen <laughs> look at that slob blammo blammo he says scoreboard <sighs> count one for the hey, park buddy. super that's oh, right. Yeah. Got one. Oh, doubles. Hey, oh. Hey. Little perch again. Well, Ryder, uh, I'd love to see a couple more of the cool features that this lake has to offer. You mind if we paddle for a little bit? Yeah, I'm all about that. I think this lake has got a lot of character to it, and there are some just great little places that you can get into and check out. Yeah, we can paddle down. We'll go into what we call the Narrows, I think is gonna be a real good spot. Really cool location. There's some cliffs that are on either side of you are kind of closed in. To me, it's the most scenic part of the lake and there may be some fishing opportunity down there too. So. Cool, let's yeah. be up down. So obviously there have been generations and countless people who've loved this place before us. Can you tell me a little bit about that history as it's come through Mirror Lake? Yeah, as we sit here in the park, we are on lands that are uh, the traditional lands of the Ho-Chunk Nation. And so they have a long history here and then certainly indigenous people before them as well. And uh, you know, as, as those of us nowadays are still here, um, you know, making use of these resources, um, those people did long before us as well. You can't be in this narrow part of the lake and have anything less than awe for everything around you. If it's the oaks leaning over the lake or the white pines towering in the glens, it is truly spectacular. And what a fun property to be associated with and, and spend your life exploring and, and maintaining and managing. Man, oh man, Ryder, this has been absolutely gorgeous. But uh, I know you've got stuff that you've got to do here in the park. And I actually want to take the opportunity, since I'm in the area, to go check out the Eldo Leopold Shack. Yeah, so, sounds like a plan, and I think you will be well served to head over to the Leopold Shack. Excellent place to check out. Um, if you want to try your hand at fishing on the Wisconsin River, it's right there too. So maybe those guys will be more lucky for you, and you'll find some stuff on the river, you know? So we decided to leave Mirror Lake. The fishing was gorgeous, and no offense to Ryder, but we thought we might bebop ourselves over into the Wisconsin River and take a stab at fishing here. So this is one of the apex fishes in this uh, river system, the Northern Pike. Also, that's a good sized fish. Not bad for landing it from a canoe. Feels big. She's powerful. You can tell. Go be a big fish. Thank you. Let's see if we can't post up right here and see if we can't catch some fish. Oh, got one. Oh, shoot. I gotta say, there isn't anything that's more fun being in a wild space in a canoe to have the opportunity to catch this beautiful smallie right here at home. This is a smallmouth bass. Now, in cold water, these are delicious. Uh, they have really nice meaty fillets. 
and can be sauteed up or added to a chowder or anything that you uh, might want to eat. But the really amazing thing is that it comes right from this place. This is its home, just like mine. And in the spirit of Leopold, we're all connected. One of the things I love about the Wisconsin River is that it courses the entire length of the state. And it's a great reminder that we're all connected by it. And there's always that sense of connection that unites the purpose of the river. We're gonna stop by someplace that's extremely special to me. It's a lesson in connectedness and mindfulness and how we as human beings interact with the world around us and especially through our food.